for the past two years, I've been an extremely dedicated user of Mac computers and I've really fell in love with Mac OS. Its elegance, simplicity, and intuitive design have really made it a great user experience. Not only this, but the seamless integration of my Mac with my other Apple products has created an ecosystem of tech that all works in unison. The ability to share documents between my devices with AirDrop, access photos taken on my iPhone, on my iPad, use my saved passwords across all different apps and websites, or even copy and pasting text from my MacBook onto my iPhone for formatting Instagram captions are all features that just work beautifully. These are just some of the reasons that I love Apple products and more importantly, my MacBook. However, I do use a custom PC for more power demanding tasks like gaming and editing a video like this one. And because of that, one thing I really missed going back to a MacBook from Windows was a mechanical keyboard. The sweet, satisfying sounds of the keys clicking and the tactile feedback that you feel from every click was something that I just fell in love with. There's unfortunately very few options in the market for these kind of keyboards on Mac. Technically speaking, any normal Windows keyboard does work, but it's still far from the experience that you would get from a native one. You have to mess around in system preferences to map the modifier keys like command, option, control, and it's virtually impossible to map any of the media keys. In addition to this, I hate when I'm using a Mac, looking at the keyboard, and it's a Windows key. I know this is a small critique, but come on, man. But luckily, if you feel the same as I do, I have almost the perfect option for you. This is the Keychron K2, a Bluetooth mechanical wireless keyboard for Mac OS. This keyboard has drastically improved my workflow as a developer, giving me the ability to quickly play pause music or tutorials I'm watching. It's really just great when I'm writing code or you know, more frequently searching Google how to center a div in CSS. The design is one of my favorite parts of this keyboard. It's very compact and tactile with a 75% or 84 key layout. It has a really clean gray and minimal design, which makes it go well with pretty much any setup. The size is perfect, fitting your arrow and media keys all in this very small form factor. The highlight of this board is obviously that it is made for Mac, and that's because it has the Mac OS function and media keys. As you can see, there's command, option, control, and it actually has the icons for all the media keys up on top. The frame itself is about an inch, and then it's an inch and a half with the feet up. While I haven't experienced this personally, I've heard a lot from people who use this keyboard that they experience a lot of wrist strain because of that height. To combat this, Keygrind does sell a $25 wrist rest on their site, but I honestly don't think that it matches very well with the aesthetic of the keyboard. It's like this wooden design and it just doesn't match up with the solid gray. Luckily, there is a bunch of options on Amazon for simple black ones that I think match it a lot better. So this keyboard has three different designs. There's the white LED that I have, there is an RGB backlit, and then an RGB backlit with an aluminum frame. Now, the aluminum framing name is kind of misleading because the build itself is still plastic, and they just screwed on these like aluminum siding. I am usually a fan of RGB lights, but this keyboard in specific, I don't think really fits well with it. I think that it looks better just with a simple white LED, at least in my setup. As far as cost, it doesn't really break the bank, which makes it an awesome budget option for a mechanical keyboard. It starts at $69 for the white LED option and increases $10 for every upgrade. By the way, all these prices are in US dollars. So the RGB version is $79 and the RGB with aluminum frame is $89. The keyboard has over 15 different lighting effects, 18 to be exact. Uh, and then they're all changed with this little light key in the top right side of the keyboard. Unfortunately, there is no downloadable software that you can use to customize effects, so you're just stuck with the preset ones. Alongside the different lighting options, you also have the choice between three different Gatoron switches. You have the blues, the reds, and the ones that I personally have are the browns, mainly because I think they're just a great middle ground. They're tactile, so they still feel very satisfying when you click and have a nice sound that isn't too loud. All right, so let's do a quick sound test of the Keychron K2 Gatoron Brown switches. Keychron does also sell another variant of this keyboard, which has hot swappable switches. You do still have the choice between the three Gatoron switches, but on this option, you have the ability to switch them out and put in any switch that you can get on the internet. That one is a little bit more pricey and actually only has two variants rather than three. The white LED version is $79, 
and then the RGB aluminum frame variant is $99. While this keyboard is aimed towards macOS users, it still works great on Windows and yes, even mobile devices. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a wireless keyboard featuring Bluetooth 5.1 technology. It allows for three simultaneous different device profiles to be connected. Swapping between them is as simple as pressing F and, and the number it corresponds to. For reference, I'm using all three. I have the number one on my MacBook, two on my PC, and three on my iPad. On the side of the keyboard, there's a slider where you can change which operating system you are connected to, whether that be Mac and iOS or Windows and Android. This just remaps the switches so that when you press command, it actually is command, or when you're on PC, you press control, it's actually control. Inside of the box, Keychron also gives you some extra keycaps. They have ones for Windows and then also some extra orange ones for the escape and light key. I'm not a huge fan of these orange ones because I think they really stand out, pop too much, and I just like the minimal design, the gray ones. This keyboard has a pretty good battery, 4,000 milliamp hours to be exact. With the white LED backlight on, it lasts around 70 hours and up to 240 if you have it turned off. Charging doesn't take too long, only about three hours, and you can also use it in wired mode with the included USB Type-C cable. However, the port is in a really awkward spot. It's here on the left side with the OS and power slider, which is just not ideal. Now, this isn't a big deal if you're using it wireless like myself, but if you are using it wired or plan on it, I would see where your PC or your laptop is located because if it's on the right side and it's gonna be spanning over the entire desk rather than just going straight back, that could be a problem. So guys, that just about wraps up the review. I think that the Keychron K2 overall is a great option for any Mac user interested in mechanical keyboards. It doesn't break the bank, making it a great budget option. However, if you are a Windows user, I would recommend looking at different options at a similar price point that do offer features like RGB light customization and have a lower input lag. If you're interested in picking this keyboard up, I'll leave some links in the description to Keygrind's website as well as some of the listings on Amazon. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more content in the very near future. On that note, I'm out. Take care.